Around the time that Tupac got out of jail, Sean Puffy Combs was about to become, I would say, the East Coast version of Suge Knight with Bad Boy Records. You know, his first big artist was the Notorious B.I.G. This bullshit about the East Coast and the West Coast started when we went out to New York to do the Source Awards. And Mr. Knight uh, went on stage, and he's in New York City, and we all know Puffy's from New York City. Any artists out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, you don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. I mean, the whole crowd started booing, and man, I thought to myself, like, why would you do that? The East Coast don't love Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row. Y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love us. Well, let it be known then. We, we know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast and F. I'm the executive producer that a comment was made about a little bit earlier. But con check this out. Contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Shook Knight for their accomplishments. And all this East and West that need to stop. It was so personal. Puffy was a good friend of mine. There's enough room in this business for two young black males who are entrepreneurs to exist. I mean, can you imagine if Al Bell and Barry Gordy were fighting or if the Temptations had beef with the Four Tops? I mean, it sounds fucking retarded when you think about it. You know, the Four Tops got beef with the Temptations. Marvin Gaye and Smokey Robinson were fighting at the Grammy Awards last night. I mean, think about that for a second. A lot of people on the West Coast felt that we have always had, our, had love for the East Coast, you know. They can come here and break their records. They come here and play at the clubs. You know, they come do in stores. We do the whole nine with them East Coast cats. And we go out there and we don't get that same love. I remember New York DJs at parties refusing to play West Coast records. They country, they're Bamas, they wear jerry curls, they can't rhyme, they're whack, it's not danceable. It was the media that blew it up, you know. You're seeing certain things that somebody said highlighted in magazines about the West Coast and vice versa, and it just just boiled over from there. All these people talk about an East Coast, West Coast war, they like the Judas was to Jesus. They only here to cause confusion. It made rap music look bad. It made rap music look like it's just another part of the dope game. Controversy is what uh, Death Row started living off of instead of talent. If this was chess, we'd be yelling checkmate three motherfucking years ago because we've been beat these motherfuckers. Then the disrespect just started getting worse and worse between the West Coast in the East Coast. Overthrow the government y'all got right now, which is Bad Boy and Nas and all that bullshit, and we will bring a new government here that will feed every person in New York. And then you had the Tupac and Big situation, you know, flaming it even more. I possess his soul, his and puppy. They know that I was the truest nigga involved with Biggie's success. I was the biggest help. I was the truest nigga. I don't write his rhymes, but he know how much he borrowed from me. He know how I used to stop my shows and let him touch the show. Let him blow up and do his whole show in the middle of my show. How I used to buy him shit and give him shit and never ask for it back. How I used to share. How I used to share my experiences in the game and my lessons and my rules and my knowledge on the game with him. You know what I mean? He owed me more. He owed me more than to turn his head and act like he didn't know niggas was about to blow my fucking head off. He knew. But for me to know, like, three weeks ago this happened and then three weeks later your album's coming out and you are fucking done in your album. But you don't know who shot me in your fucking hometown? This nigga's from your neighborhood? And I gotta find out by myself? And, I'm from, and I don't even call myself a dime, just a capo. From the west side, and I'm on the east side in jail, and I know who touched me, and I know everything that happened. Tupac was wrong in blaming whoever the individual figures were who actually had something to do with it in New York and making it into this whole New York City thing and then this East Coast, West Coast thing. And I think that he definitely had someone in his ear, probably Suge, exacerbating it. It sells records. It continues to get media attention, which sells more records. Tupac had claimed to have gone out with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. This was a, a great humiliation, reportedly, for Biggie. It was all over. We were uh, in Manhattan shooting a video. 
Biggie Smalls had gotten on the uh, radio station and Biggie said that I cannot believe that New York is allowing Tupac and the Dog Pound to shoot a video in our city right in the heart of Times Square. The words out of Biggie's mouth was Tupac and the Dog Pound. And it wasn't. It was Snoop and the Dog Pound. Tupac was not with us. Snoop at the time was having his hair braided. And all of the artists was in the trailer. And then all of a sudden, gunfire. Someone shot into the trailer. They weren't shooting in there to say, you know, get out. They were shooting in there to kill someone. There was a shift in Tupac Shakur's lyrical content. He, at first, was more political. Then at some point, he became more um, street. It was West Coast versus East Coast. The person at Rikers Island was very reflective, and he's going to change his life and everything. This new person was like, fuck New York, fuck the East Coast. Sugar's the man. He takes care of me. He's flashing money in front of the MTV cameras. It was like, wow, I was Jekyll and Hyde. One of the songs was a song called Hit Em Up. It talked about killing the uh, bad boy camp, you know, different artists. It was a lot of threats. It was Pac. I go, did, did you hear what you said? He was like, yeah, nigga, I wrote it. OK, um, we're going to need some more security, and you need to start wearing a vest. 